PeachTools.com. G'day guys, as you can see I'm still playing with my new plasma cutter here. Before I had a plasma cutter guys, I used to just do straight lines with the bloody angle grinder. All I used to do was just try and cut off what I needed to cut. But now what I do is I do squiggles and I do patterns and I've even done my own name. It's just so much easier and so much fun. Anyway guys, what am I on about today? My latest toy, my plasma cutter with the built-in air compressor. What I want to do is pull it to bits and actually see how big the air compressor is inside it. And how they managed to get enough air to make this thing cut like up to 10 mil and something this small. Anyway guys, that's what we're doing today. We're going to pull my new machine to bits and see what's inside it. Yeah! So if you've watched any of my other videos guys, you know I'm always trying to get these things to run on as least air as possible. And because this one's got a built in air compressor, I thought to myself, I thought to myself, why not pull it to bits Pete and have a look at what size the air compressor is and I might be able to come up with something or find something online that I could actually just bolt on to a normal plasma cutter and see if we could actually make it self-contained like this unit. Anyway, it's worth a try guys. So if we turn the bloody thing off before I electrocute myself and we'll unplug it as well and then we'll see what's inside it, eh? I've never actually pulled one of these to bits before. I've had other plasma cutters in bits see how, what makes them tick and that sort of thing, but I've never actually pulled one to bits with an air compressor like this, so your guess is as good as mine, guys. But I am still continue to be quite impressed with this machine about how it can actually plasma cut with the compressor already in here. Because I was actually reading some reviews online, not about this machine, but about other machines, and they just don't seem to have the puff. Well, this thing hasn't run out of puff yet, so let's see what size compressor's in it, guys. Just bear with me while I pull it to bits. The front comes off quite easy guys. Now I think we're going to have to do the same to the back. So let's turn it around. It's bloody heavy this thing guys. It really is. Oh. And it must be the extra weight on the compressor I think. And the back comes off just like so. Get it off there Pete. <laughs> now knowing me I'll lose half these bloody pieces. Right now what do we got? Screws here, screws here, screws up the side. So let's turn it around again. Oh, need to eat more wheat mix or porridge or something like that, guys. Get my strength up. I don't think you're supposed to pull these to bits, but I won't tell anybody, guys. Mm. Turn them around again. Now one thing I noticed with this machine, it hasn't got a water trap, so you might have to put an external one on. Because most of the other plasma cutters that had an external air supply have a water trap. But anyway, we shall have a look. We've got the handle, I think, still holding the top on, guys. If you're wondering why I'm using a screwdriver on the handle and not my drill, it's because my drill bit is not long enough to go right in there. <whistles> and alright, let's have a look. Hee <laughs> hee! What have we got? We have got a plasma cutter. And where's the compressor, guys? Ooh -wee. Check it out. So check the size of this compressor out, guys. This is quite large, actually. I'm really, really surprised at the size of that. 
and it looks like it's bloody heavy too, so that's probably most of the weight of the bloody plasma cutter right here. Oh, and look here, guys. Remember what I said about that water trap? There's a bloody water trap here as well. So how do you... Oh, it's got a hole in the bottom of it that you just pull in and out to release the water. Well, I didn't even know that. <laughs> so there you go. I was moaning about nothing. So what do we got? We got here our external air. You can plug that in with the regulator here. That goes to the LED here. It gives you how much pressure you've got. Or you can use the internal one here, which must be the switch here, internal, external. It's all pretty nicely set up, if you ask me, guys. And look at this compressor here. It's double compressor pump. Looks like the air comes in here. Looks like we've got a motor here with a piston both ends. That's a good idea, eh? It's so compact. And it looks like the air is intake is coming from here from the bottom of the piston and it's just forcing it up and as you notice too guys there's no holding tank so this runs at two and a half bar constantly yeah Pete, turn it on see what happens with this machine here guys you've got a switch you can just have the air running without the actual plasma torch it's designed to get the water out of the line and that sort of thing so if i kick it in the guts and we'll see how this thing operates eh? <laughs> right, turn it on keep your fingers out of the way Pete. so we've got it all lit up here Starting to light up. You can hear the fan going. Where's the fan? You know, there's a big internal fan on a heat sink on the other side, guys. I'll show you in a minute. Right now, if I just go to air. Look at that. Now we've got air coming out of here, guys, without actually cutting. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Yeah, look at that, eh? Double-winded piston. That's, that's, that's pretty cool. And that's quite quiet, too. You actually listen to it, guys. Listen to how quiet it is. And you can actually put an air gun on here and blow out your, your workshop and all sorts of things. Oh, I'm quite impressed with that, actually. That is, that is really, really awesome. Now, like I said, guys, if you watched any of my other videos, you've been... You know that I've been trying to run bloody plasma cutters on all sorts of air supplies. Now my theory was, see I brought this silly little pump here. Now it's only a 12 volt, but I presume you can get a 110 or a 220 volt version of the same. My theory was, on a normal plasma cutter, stick something like that on the side of it and be able to take it outside or if you're out on the farm or, or whatever you're doing and you need to do a bit of work outside and you can't drag your big compressor around. That was my theory as well. I've actually got a video on trying to run a plasma cutter on this, so if you want to have a look at that, I'll put the link in the description below. Quite a disaster, really. And I've actually got some more videos, if you haven't got a compressor at all, but this is all you bloody got, how to run a plasma cutter on an old car tyre that you have to pump up first with this, of course, and then use the pressure stored in the tyre to actually plasma cut with. I've got a video on that too, if you want to have a look at that. It was just a bit of fun. But, uh, yeah, so what I might do, guys, is actually have a look online, and see if I can buy some of these units, just the compressor unit head thing here, and have a play with them. Because this would be quite useful for a whole lot of other stuff, I'm just thinking. Not only plasma cutting, stuff that you need air for, and you don't want to drag a really, really big compressor around. Anyway, let's turn the thing around and have a look at the other side of it, eh? So we have a look on this side, guys. We've got a couple of great big heat sinks here, four of them by the look of it, and they're bigger than on any other unit that I've pulled to bits. We've got a great big fan in the back here. And also I noticed here, if you note here, is actually if you take this cover off, it's got a filter for the air compressor that you can actually clean out in that as well. So they're quite impressive, really. Really, really compact machine. But like I keep saying, I'm quite impressed how much air it can deliver in such a small machine. When you, like I said, it's 20 kilos, but anyway, a bit more breakfast cereal and we'll be able to lift that, no worries at all. So let's have a look. We'll put some air on again. Yeah, it's real, real quiet, eh? Quite impressed, really. So, guys, let's put it back together before I bloody break any of it. Because <laughs> I'm a clumsy side. If you watched any of my videos before, you know that I'm not exactly careful with my stuff. But anyway, if it's any good, it's got to be designed to be peak proof. <laughs> so, I've always wanted to pull one of these to bits, and now I know. Oop, the wrong screw in there. So looking at that internal compressor, guys, it was 750 watts from what I could see. 
220 volt, but I presume you can get them in 110 volt as well. I don't know about you guys, but I love pulling stuff to bits, because you learn such a lot if you pull it to bits. I don't mean pull it to bits as in break it, I just mean pull it to bits to see what makes it tick. Mind you, I'm no electrician, so the, the electronic gizmos there don't mean much to me. But as far as the air compressor goes and that sort of stuff, I like to see what's going on. Maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just weird. comments below guys if you guys like pulling stuff to bits and tell me what's the strangest thing you've ever pulled to bits and what and was it what you expected it to be inside and Pete you put that in the wrong hole again oh dear hard to get good stuff these days guys it's a trouble when you work alone you got no one to blame for your cock ups except yourself <laughs> Now if you want any information on this machine, I've got other videos on this machine, drop me a note and I will give you the contact details of the factory that makes them, if you like. Right, turn them around. Put the front back on him. Right here guys, let's see if it still goes, eh? <laughs> all right eh? so what have we learned in this video well we've got a 750 watt motor with double piston with a um, motor running underneath it so we've got the motor in the middle and we've got two pistons either side it doesn't have a holding tank and it runs constantly at about 40 psi or two and a half bar so that's what I'm going to look for online see if I can get something the same and see if we can bolt it on another plasma cutter and see if we can actually get it to cut like this machine does so if you watched any of my other videos guys, you see I've compared this plasma cutter here with a normal plasma cutter but without the internal air compressor to see if this thing actually is designed to run on less air and it's not. They both can run and cut exactly the same thing on about two and a half bar. So that's what my theory is. I'm going to try and see if I can get a, a little compressor and bolt it on the side of the machine and see if we can actually get the thing to run. Anyway guys, that's enough bullshit from me for today. You know what to do. If you like, subscribe, drop me a like, drop me a comment. If you want any info about this machine, get in touch with me. I can give you some contact details for the factory in China. And we'll see you next time, eh? Keep cool till after school, guys. See ya.